Look at the fish feeding. It's unbelievable. So we're back over to Fort Lauderdale to get a good look at the uh, 5,000 gallon Living Coral Reef Aquarium. It's now operating about three years and a little rain here in South Florida today, but let's go take a look inside. Joe is in today diving in the aquarium. Typically we do that on Fridays. He's doing some photography of different corals and different aspects of what is really working super well in the aquarium. But this is really how we do it with basically a hookah hose from brownies and a scuba tank outside to gain access into it. But with an aquarium of this size, you really need that ability to get into the box and dive in the box of salt water. We currently are diving in about five different aquariums every single month. Some jellyfish aquariums, several large uh, reef aquariums, a brand new one we have there on the west coast of Florida now. We'll need to be dove at least twice a month, especially in the beginning, to add corals into the aquarium to start to populate the aquarium with corals down lower, the corals that are going to grow lower, and then corals that are higher that are going to grow higher. But typically, even with a of tongs you just don't get up here and start gluing corals to the bottom of the aquarium you physically have to get in and then be careful of where you're going and how you're traversing in the aquarium joe today is wearing the ankle weights that i bought three years ago when we first started diving that really keeps his feet down so he's not flailing with his feet and that he doesn't just you know jump on this big montefora down here and break off half of that coral down to the floor of the aquarium so there's been lots of different changes over time. There's a really significant fish population, probably about 250 different reef fish throughout the aquarium. The newest ones, there's a pair of Tabellus angels right here. That's the uh, female. And she's getting along pretty well, actually. Uh, not phased by Joe diving in the aquarium today. It appears though that the male, which here it is right here, there's the male. They've been in here for a little more than a month. They came from AM Aquatics up in Lansing, Michigan. As a mated pair collected with Brian in tow in the Philippines back several months ago. So they were held and quarantined at AM Aquatics and acclimated in as a mated pair from the ocean straight into this aquarium. So that's a fascinating story from literally the other side of the earth to here. So some of the things you'll notice that we're dealing with, as a matter of fact, Joe's gonna deal with it today. The green bird's nest, which is a seriatopora, is just growing like a weed. He's farmed back some pieces over here. You can see cut back a space last week to allow for the uh, lobophilias to open up and not get shaded out. I suppose today he's going to whack some more of it back here in the back of the aquarium that's going to again shade out and overgrow corals. And that really is typical maintenance on such a large aquarium over time. You're going to start to harvest corals out because they're just going to overgrow and shade out the other corals in the aquarium. And I think when I look at it from the three year perspective, we've now gotten to a situation where there's a group of corals that do really well and are growing super well and we keep encouraging the growth of those corals in the aquarium by planting the same types of corals that are doing well together. You can see obviously there's a really large group of Montipora, some grafted Monte caps down here, this, this incredible piece that we got from TSA. Here's another really incredible green Montipora Capricornus and when you look at the walls from the ones that I glued to the walls. There's a, I guess it's a, probably a sunset monopora back there. And I glued it to the wall and it's growing up the wall and plating out towards the light with the three sun tubes above and um, the uh, 20 Radeon Gen 5s, I believe that are up there now that are really giving enough light, obviously enough par to the bottom of the aquarium for those corals to grow and thrive. Even this green Monte cap over here, I mean, just look at how it's growing and plating out. These are super cool. They're growing and plating out. This one, I can look down here and say it probably could use a little more light and maybe getting shaded by this piece of grafted Monte Cap up there. There's another grafted Monte Cap here. The uh, sprung stunner we've trimmed back numerous times. There's another species that's within there. So we had two. We put them together, two different species, but he needs to continue to harvest those back or they'll touch the front acrylic, which we don't want to happen. Uh, because you need to get through there to clean it and to use the magnets as well. 
lots of the acros have done really well. You've got a blue um, Oregon Tort right there that's doing super well. Different types of acros, either from ORA or TSA, even back over up in here, you can see this really incredible acros growing and that they're growing out and up in a super fashion. Uh, one of the things that we've done as the aquarium's matured in is that there's less snails than we've had in the past, meaning Astriotectas or Zebra Trochus. And Ryan's preference is to use the Royal Pincushion Urchins. And you can see them around. Here they are on the bottom right down there. There's another one over here, right? The, the Acanthophilias. And those guys have a good tendency to, to keep grooming the rock surfaces, the back walls of the aquarium to keep them clean and eating mostly microalgae. You can see a series of the original Astriotectus snails on the wall over here. Here, a whole bunch of them on that wall. And those are literally been in the aquarium for three years. Oh, they've grown in really big, but I think really a life cycle of an uh, astro snail might be not much more than a few years in the ocean and the wild as well. We've had several gonopores on this gonopora ledge over here, and they are really growing in together. There's the red and the green gonopores there that we purchased from ORA. And then there's a new series of them on this vertical edge where we used to have more acans that were getting picked on by the angelfish, whether it's Lamarck's, there's a Singapore angel in here. At one time, there was a copper band butterfly that was picking on those fleshy corals. So we've kind of stared back and that's something we'll end up doing over time. If that coral doesn't make it, we don't keep just putting it in. It really needs to get into an aquarium where there aren't as many fish that might be picking on it. So instead of those kinds of fish, you can see we have just a whole army of uh, twin spot anthias that are doing super well. Lots of super males. There's at least three super males I see right now, maybe four. And there's at least 20 females in here. They're really incredible. So we've kept that group. Again, it's a community fish. If you've ever dove in the ocean and seen them before like I have, they're typically on the shoals on ledges that are deeper, maybe 80 feet, 70 feet, 50 feet, 90 feet. But they're a planktivore, so they're always out in the water column looking for food as it floats by on the uh, reef or the wall edge where they live in nature. So same thing here. We're, you know, we're auto feeding this aquarium no less than nine times a day through the refrigerator refrigerated feed systems that we have here that's automated and hooked up to the Apex Dose system for just those liquid foods. And then of course we have the twin barrels of dry foods going in, probably some Hikari spirulina food, some Thera A, and I know we have the uh, TDO food that's going in to keep a massive fish load in a large reef, you've got to automate the feeds and have that going constant because we're only here three days a week feeding frozen foods that Ryan is already be thawing right now in the kitchen. And then he'll feed them typically when he first gets here. And then before he leaves three hours later, he'll feed them another group of PE mice, some brine shrimp. So always that frozen is going in. Look at this Melanaris Rex. Look how fat and happy that guy is right there. Really a super fish. A pair of Leucocranius, they've made a home out of these gonopores. I don't know that they're laying eggs, but Ryan would know. And then of course we've got, you know, the ORA storm clowns. They really are just incredible. Just look at the coloration of those clownfish. What a pattern, just, just fascinating to see that 25 years later, the amount of the different groups of clowns that have been bred is just phenomenal. The aquarium has been growing in so incredibly. Look at the fish feeding. It's unbelievable. There's got to be 300 in here. Really doing well. It's a tremendous diet. Uh, that's what keeps the aquarium so healthy, all the fish so healthy. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.